the EVTN news. I have a lot of news stories, but a lot of them are kind of kind of short. So we will get into that. I know I have a an intro at the beginning. Uh, last uh, what is it? Last week I had an intro at the beginning about Peeps, and uh, so I went to Walmart, and the candy was seventy five percent off. So wasn't a whole lot left, but I still picked some up. So that's what I got. So in Ireland, uh, the resident Biden went to the Shrine of Knock in Ireland last week or the week before, I don't know, recently. Those in charge of Knock Shrine allowed the holy site to be used to rehabilitate U.S. President, well, uh, current resident of the White House, Joe Biden's image with potential Catholic voters as he prepared his election bid with a cynical visit to Ireland. In response, a number of Catholics performed prayers using exorcism salt at the shrine following the visit. In, in video footage, the Catholics can be seen with exorcism salt and holy water. Many of them brought holy medals to the site. These individuals also prayed for the conversion of Joe Biden. They prayed, too, for repentance from Ireland. So there you go. Excellent. Thank you to the Irish Catholics who um, <clears throat> prayed for the conversion of the current resident of the United States White House. And, um, yeah, thank you. Excellent. And I think that someone needs to go to the Vatican and use exorcism salt and holy water. Although, if you're not an exorcist, that might... I don't know. That might be dangerous. But, yeah, at the Vatican, it might be nice to take some some real holy water with the blessed salt, you know. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So I told you about the Latin Mass crackdown in the Diocese of Corpus Christi, Texas. I talked about that a little bit. I didn't have much information, but there's more information now. Bishop Michael Mulvey claimed in a letter that the primary reason for the suspension of the Latin Mass in the Diocese of Corpus Christi was the recent resignation of Father Rodolfo Vazquez as pastor of St. John the Baptist Catholic Church. However, Father Vazquez's former parishioners told LifeSite News that the priest had submitted his resignation only after being told by the bishop the Latin Mass would be discontinued. So what's the real story, Bishop? You canceled it because you wanted to. So there you go. Do we have any bishops on our side? Anyone besides the bishops in the SSPX? Seriously. That's an honest question. <laughs> One who's definitely not on our side. Bishop John Stowe of Lexington, Kentucky, has hired Aaron Bianco as the new director of the Office of Worship. So, probably like a liturgy director. And they call that worship. Praise and worship. I don't know. <clears throat> I'll answer that question in a while. One wonders why a diocese with 40,000 Catholics needs such an office, the director of the Office of Worship. ComplicitClergy.com Complicit noted that Bianco is a pseudo-married is pseudo-married to another man. Bianco was a professor of theology and religious studies at the University of San Diego, where he set up uh, an LMNOP ministry with the approval of McElroy. So Bishop Stowe is hiring. Oh, he's a, he's a married LMNOP. You'd think that he would hire a single LMNOP with how much he promotes the LMNOP. Hmm, let me think about that one. Or don't think about it. We won't think about it. We'll move to Germany. Uh, there's a story in Germany that's not about LMNOP. P uh, Peter and Paul Parrish in Bochum, Germany, is deceiving churchgoers with pseudo-confessions. According to the most recent parish bulletin, the parish invented a silent confession 
during the corona hysteria. This self-deception was repeated on the fourth and fifth Sundays of Lent. It works like this. You examine your conscience at home or in church. After Mass, you go to the priest, begin your confession, confession with the sign of the cross, and silently, without loud words, bring your sins before God. Before God. Afterwards, you ask the priest for a magical absolution of sins that he doesn't know. So there you go. You go up to the priest. You begin with the sign of the cross, and he gives you absolution. Good. All right, and that's quick. Um, that would cut down on waiting time in the confession line, so, I mean, that helps. <clears throat> you don't have to wait for 20 minutes for a person to have their... When I hear people laugh in the confessional... Mm. All right. I think it's... Uh, when, when they're laughing, it's time to get moving, you know? If you need spiritual direction or if you want to tell jokes to the priest, then you can do that at a different time when his confessions aren't scheduled. I'm sure he wouldn't be. I'm sure he wouldn't mind to hear a joke when he's doing like a budget or something. Take a little break, listen to a joke. I don't know. It happens to all of us. Okay. So on... April 18th, a group of Anglican clergy from the Anglican uh, from the Anglican Fake Diocese of Fulham, England, were granted permission to celebrate a liturgy in, in the historic Basilica of St. John Lateran in Rome, led by their um, bishop, their fake bishop, Jonathan Baker of Fulham, over 30 clergymen took part in the event, which was held at the altar of the cathedral in the basilica. Bishop uh, Guernio, Guerino uh, de Tora, auxiliary bishop of Rome for the northern area, and the vicar of the chapter of St. John Lateran issued an apology on Thursday. He explained that the unfortunate episode was caused by a lack of communication. So it's someone's fault. Coptic Orthodox are scheduled to celebrate their liturgy in the same basilica in May. So uh, another non-Catholic group, although the Orthodox are look to Catholicism and the fake um, Anglicans. Because the, the Anglicans, I believe it was Leo the Thirteenth who said that their orders were completely fake. So they don't have real religious orders or holy orders, I guess. The Orthodox do, <clears throat> so at least they have people with holy orders. Uh, they wanted the first, the, I think, um, I don't know if it was Pope Francis or whoever, wanted the first non-Catholics to be the Orthodox, but it was uh, to celebrate their liturgy there, but unfortunately it was the Anglicans. And <clears throat> so I don't think this, I mean, I don't know, does this go, is this Pope Francis' fault? I don't know. Did he decide to do that I don't know I'm thinking probably not it was probably someone else I mean it's I'm not gonna blame Pope Francis for that he does he has a lot of other crazy stuff that he does um, okay so getting to uh, to McCarrick this is a blog written by someone named Harvey Millican and I think it's an interesting perspective. So listen to this. McCarrick is currently living at the Redemptorist Mater Seminary in suburban D.C., his old stomping grounds. So he moved. McCarrick is on the move. And he's in a seminary in D.C., suburban D.C. Gregory, Wilton Gregory, was the archbishop, <clears throat> cardinal in that diocese. He got his cardinal hat for covering up for McCarrick. That's not fact, but what do you think? You think it's plausible? Well, McCarrick's back. Do you think Gregory didn't know about it? McCarrick living in a seminary? You think Mc you think Gregory's? Do you think he had no idea? Oh, I had no idea. Just like McCarrick's friends, yeah, they had no idea that McCarrick did all this crazy stuff with. Men, 
over the age of 18 or under 18, they probably weren't sure so much about all the molesting that he did, but I'm sure they had an idea of all the other stuff he did with the seminarians. Maybe they were even part of it. <clears throat> anyway, he's the, this guy says, this seminary, if I'm not mistaken, is similar to the Redemptor's Mater Seminary in the Newark Archdiocese. It is a house of formation, in parentheses, malformation, for members of the neocatechumenal neo catechumenal way i don't actually know any much about them i think uh, i don't know i always thought they were similar to opus day but i've never done enough research to actually um, look into that <clears throat> remember them they were a favorite of ted when he was serving as ordinary in both newark and washington seas they were a favorite because they boosted his numbers and allowed him to claim that he ordained more men than any other bishop in the country every year. He forgot to mention that these foreign-born seminarians were all released from service to the ordaining diocese after three years. Uh, I've raised the question before, but here it is again. When a man is laicized and returned to the lay state, how does that man still have access to living arrangements furnished by the institutional church? This is a great question. Why are they slash we housing this individual at all? So that's the point. Your donations are paying for McCarrick's living expenses. If you are in the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C., it's probably where some of your money is going if you're donating money to the Archdiocese, which you shouldn't, because it's completely compromised. It's been compromised. Washington is worse than some of the others, uh, which is really sad to say, because they're in bad shape. Final note, George Neumeier hinted before his untimely death that it was possible McCarrick has not been laicized after all. Now that George is gone, isn't it odd that they put McCarrick in residence right in George's old neck of the woods? All of this, and we still haven't begun to discuss the ritualistic nature of the alleged abuse in the Wisconsin case that McCarrick was accused of last week, and the fact that the other man mentioned was almost certainly Joseph Bernadine. So this gets really deep. Eventually the news is going to come out, but there's people asking questions, and they think these questions deserve answers. So George Neumeier suggested that McCarrick wasn't laicized. A lot of the media reported that he was, but where are the papers? Do we Have we seen the paperwork? If you haven't seen the paperwork, then all it is is speculation. So I don't know. It throws a lot of things into question, and you're not going to hear about it on any other channel, right? Is any of these other news channels going to talk about it, or are they just going to bash the SSPX? Oh, you tuned them out, though. You tuned them out long ago, right? Hopefully. Church Militant, I guess, laid off more people. Look what it's doing for them. What has been the latest controversy? Like slamming the heretics? I don't know. Defending the SSPX? Kennedy Hall's releasing a book. But on this channel, I'm trying to find this information, and there's not a lot of it available. But people are asking questions. I'm glad if, if this, this blog, I mean, I'm glad to, to share this information. Speaking of the SSPX, you won't hear this other places either for a while. I don't know. Um, this was only this was on Gloria TV and I haven't seen it anywhere else, so I don't know the truth to it. Take it with maybe a grain of salt. It's rumors. Father David Pagliarani, Superior General of the SSPX, has asked his priests to prepare the faithful for upcoming Episcopal consecrations. That's new bishops. New bishops for the SSPX. That's what this rumor says. Non posthumous dash vcr.blogspot okay so it's a blog 
they wrote this adding, it cannot reveal the source of this information, but it is certain. Hmm. I can't reveal the source of my information, but it's certain. I don't know. Maybe. At present, um, SSPX has two bishops who can fully carry out their duties. Bishop Alfonso de Galaretta, based in Switzerland, and Bishop Bernard Follet, based in the United States. Bishop Tissier is the other bishop, and apparently he has health problems. And also, Bishop Williamson was, I think he was either kicked out or he quit the SSPX. I don't know which. But uh, some of the things he has to say are pretty interesting. And I, I wish he would, I, I wish he was with the SSPX. I, I do, I really do. Because they could really use him, but I think they wanted to kind of distance themselves from him and he wanted to distance themselves from them. I think it was, I think it's mutual. Maybe not. Maybe the SSPX would take him. But I know he doesn't want to be back with the SSPX. Anyway, more information on the Anglicans. The Anglican vicar David Burroughs, rector of St. Mary's and All Saints in, Eng in Elland, England, wrote on Twitter on April 20th that he said, this is a quote, I have said Mass publicly as a priest of the Church of England. It's a fake Mass. In churches and at altars under the direct control of the Bishop of Rome, both within the Vatican and the city of Rome, each time each be each time being given the tabernacle key. Yeah, so that that's the Catholic faith of the Catholic, supposedly Catholic priests in Rome. Uh, Pope Leo the Thirteenth. Uh, here it is. Pope Leo the Thirteenth came to the conclusion that Anglican ordinations are utterly null and void. They're fake. They are fake. So he's not a real priest. He's just a fake lay heretic, and he's pretending to say mass, which is probably more reverent than the Novus Ordo. So there you go. All right, and then I guess the big controversy was the Pontifical Academy for Death. Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, president of the Pontifical Academy for Life, oh, death, has spoken in support of legally legalized medically assisted suicide, calling it feasible despite the clear teachings of the Catholic Church against it. He said, personally, I would not practice suicide assistance, but I understand the legal mediation may be the greatest common good concretely possible under the conditions we find ourselves in. So after that uh, outrage, he issued an apology, and basically he took the, when was it popularized? The, the Democrat Party stance where the, the Catholics used to take, well, the so-called Catholics used to take this stance in the Democrat Party. Now they're outright um, demonic uh child murderers, but they they used to say, pers I'm personally opposed, but I'm not going to restrict someone's right, and so that's sort of the stance that he took in this, in his so-called apology. He said, oh, I'm personally opposed. Yeah, okay. His, and Pope Francis personally opposed the sodomy, but he promotes people who endorse it. Hmm, how does that work? How does that work when you promote people that are obstinately, um, blatantly in heresy, promoting these anti-Catholic ideas, numerous anti-Catholic ideas? Well, I'm personally opposed, but I'm going to continue to give them a platform to um, spew this anti-Catholic nonsense under the guise that it's Catholic. How does that work? It's all bad. Excommunicate them all. We need a real pope that will excommunicate all the fake Catholics. What about Strickland? Okay, so that was uh, in regards to defending the Mass. So far in Strickland's diocese, it's been good. He, he brought in the, an FSSP parish there. I believe there are, is actually another Latin Mass in Tyler, Texas, which isn't... I mean, it looks like a decent-sized town. 
but um, it's not it's not nearly a city like uh, Dallas or any of the other Houston. Houston is very big, one of the biggest cities in the United States, I believe. Um, <clears throat> it's not one of the big cities like that, but yet he has several Latin Mass options. Now, if push comes to shove, would he ban the Latin Mass if the Vatican tries to get everyone to ban the Latin Mass? I don't know. I don't know, because um, what's, what, would, what would Strickland do? Kennedy Hall did a video today showing Pope Francis approves the SSPX. I believe, I mean, yeah, I think that's fine. So the Pope wants to get rid of the Latin Mass. Is fine with the SSPX. It's a very odd scenario isn't it? It's very odd. People don't really understand it. But really, under, Pope Francis was the one who gave faculties to the SSPX in the first place. Um, now, what people speculate, and I think there's a lot of truth to it, is that Pope Francis wants to push all of the Latin Mass attendees into the SSPX and then excommunicate them, which it takes a while to do that, and hopefully Pope Francis won't have a while to implement that. I, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't, it, you're right, it doesn't make a lot of sense. That's just how it goes. So, okay. So also, this won't be on today's video, but I have compiled a list of bishops who I expect to receive promotions in the United States. Maybe I can do that sometime. I'll have to dangle it out there because I'm going to be like, I don't know, I don't want to make excuses, but I just haven't gotten around to doing videos. I have some video ideas, not like great, fantastic ideas. I think some you'll be interested in, maybe, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll get to those. I'll get to those sometime. And plus, with the weather getting nice, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I really haven't been committing a lot of time to doing videos, but I'd like to get to do more, so... All right, well, this has been EVTN News. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. We are the laity, and we will not be silent.